This is One on One. Brought to you by New Jersey Council of County Colleges. We are pleased to welcome Beth Kobliner, who is the author of Make Your Kid a Money Genius, Even If You're Not. How you doing? I'm good. Good to be here. Thank you. Well, you and I were just talking off camera about how challenging it is. Real quick, some of the anecdotal stuff you just told me, some parents sometimes say things like? Uh, my kid wants to buy $1,200 jeans. Do you think that's okay? That was in LA. What? In New York, my 21-year-old wants a platinum card, Amex card, because that would allow him to go into the lounge with his friends. And you and say? No, tell him he can have an Amex card. He can have a platinum one as long as he earns the money to get one. I think sometimes parents are fearful of going through and having the talk about why it's important to be smart about money. And I think it's interesting whether a person has a lot of money or very little money, there's a fear of confronting money. It's still a taboo topic. We talk about sex, we talk about drugs, we talk about alcohol with kids, but people are afraid to talk about money and I think it is so important. How soon? By age three, wow. research shows, University of Wisconsin shows that by age three, kids understand basic money values like exchange, we give money, we get something back, they understand value, things have value, or they understand choices. We have to make choices when we buy things. But um, the bad news is, because I know you have a six-year-old, but by age seven, a lot of those money habits are set. Please stop, can like we go impulse back? impulse control, but, 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 but. Can we rewind? <laughs> but you can do so much uh. at, from age eight, my book is for age three to 23, okay. how to talk to kids, and there are so many, Everyday moments, um, if you go buy a car, you say, you know what, this is the price we're gonna negotiate, or we're gonna get an interest rate, a lower interest rate on the loan, we're gonna go to a bank. All those everyday moments are worthwhile discussing. So, I don't wanna make the show about me, because it's not. Let's make it about you, it's your no, show. No, 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 okay. but here's the thing. It's me as a, you know, because everybody else has a piece of this. Right. My wife often tells me with our, our, our daughter Olivia, only six, we've got the other kids, teenagers, and a big boy who's, solid and 24 from her first marriage. Okay, too much information, I know, but here's the deal with the six-year-old. My wife says, stop giving her what she wants because she asked for it. She's right. Stop doing that because you're creating a situation that's gonna be a problem Absolutely. later. Absolutely. Okay, so. Yeah. I keep thinking at some point later on, when she's older, I'll be able to talk to her about mm -hmm. the value Got to do it now. I mean, first of all, research shows she will understand, and she sounds very smart. And the second thing is, you know, there was one study that found that when parents give in at the checkout line, you know, you're at, at a yes. store and they want this, they want that. If you repeatedly give in, those kids, they studied them at Duke, and they found they're more likely to get into credit card debt when they're older because they, no, they have no impulse control. And then control. I'm going to have to pay that credit card. Okay. Well, you shouldn't co-sign the credit card, and President Obama passed the Card Act, which said, you know, when we were kids, you could get a credit card just yes. by signing your name. Now, you have to be 21 years old or have an income wow. to get a credit card, but you can get one. The exception is with a parent co-signing, and parents should never co-sign a credit card Do with their we, kids. as parents, sometimes uh, give in to our kids and make the wrong decisions about what we give them and how we deal with money because, quote, we want them to like, we want them to like us more? I think yes, we're working hard. Two parents are working in a lot of families, people are very busy, and you feel like that's an easier decision. But when I tell people the research that shows, for example, if you give your kids chores without paying your kids, the research shows that they're more likely to graduate from college and more likely to start a career. So work so, without asking me for $10. Exactly, do not negotiate with kids, You know, don't negotiate with terrorists or kids, and don't, don't, let kids dictate the rules because as a parent, you know, we're seeing more and more. A lot of it is about self-motivation. For example, when you bribe a kid for grades, you say, you get an A, I'll give you 50 bucks. It show, research shows, the Harvard professor found, it really doesn't work. It doesn't improve reading or math scores. It barely improves GPA at all. And it's more important that it comes from self-motivation, whether it's doing household chores as a family member mm -hmm. or getting good grades in school. And you have to start that earlier, the earlier better. We have better. some friends, I hope they're not watching right now, <laughs> who, let's just say, have children uh, into their 20s, mm -hmm. late into their 20s, closer to the other number on the other end. They pay a lot of bills for their kids. Mm -hmm. I'm talking 
car insurance, rent, phone bill. Just, go ahead, talk to me. Here's the problem. We are all living longer. You know, knock on wood, we'll be living longer. And then when those parents, at a certain point, unless they have more money and they could just keep doing it forever, I don't think that's doing their kids any favor and their kids will never learn financial responsibility. But at a certain point, kids are gonna be the grown-ups, and the parents are gonna be old. And we need to, you know, be realistic that those parents may be relying on their children for help one day. So I think we have to educate children, everything from paying down student yeah. debt, that's something that a lot of young people are struggling with, and moving back home. A lot of young people are moving back home and parents don't know what to do. We have to be clear with them. Great, you can live at home for a year or two, but, but you have to make your student loan payments. I want to see you saving up an emergency cushion, and maybe you can pay rent. You know, it depends upon the family. Even when it's sorry for interrupting. Even yeah. when it's so hard to find a job for many of these young kids. I think that the rent is, if you need it, you have to ask for it. But if you don't need it as a parent, I would skip the rent. But make sure your kid is paying those student loan payments and go with them to their repayment options that they can find to make lower payments. But don't let them skip a payment because that's going to hurt their credit score and make it harder for them to get a home mortgage one oh day. Oh, gosh. Now, for a lot of parents who actually have their own financial problems, right. isn't it harder for them, us, to talk about money with kids? My answer is it might be harder, but it shouldn't be. We, couldn't, we shouldn't let it be because we have to put our own money baggage. Everyone has money baggage. I had a lot of money as a kid. That's why I'm bad at money. My parents never taught me. I have no money. My parents never taught me. We have to put that aside and think. And that's why I wrote my book. It's funny because a lot of parents say, well, how can I teach my kid about money if I don't know about money? And the point is you have to educate yourself yeah. and you have to learn the basics to teach a kid about compound interest or opening a Roth IRA right really? out of school. Pretty basic stuff, though. I'm, it may sound complicated, but it's not. A few simple rules. Before I let you out, should parents tell kids how much money they have or and or how little money? Meaning, if we're struggling or, hey, just want you to know we're doing relatively well right now and we're putting this in your college fund. How much is right. too much? How much is too much? Well, it has to be age appropriate. So if you have a six-year-old, you don't say, hey, my 401k really tanked. But when it comes <laughs> to college savings, yes. when it comes to college savings, you have to tell your kid you have money earmarked for their college because research Only for shows. That. Well, research shows that you don't have to tell them how much is in it, but when you tell a kid he has money for his savings for college, they're three times more likely to go to college is regardless right? of how much money is in the account. And how about finally, if a parent who's struggling, and many are out there struggling, Absolutely. working as hard as they can, or looking for a job or right. lost their job, can you tell a kid that if you're struggling? You can say, you know what? We're having a hard time. We're all going to chip in. Or I know you wish we had X, Y, and Z. I do okay. too, but you know what? We're a family, we're in this together. Thank you for helping so many people. Beth Kobliner is the author of Make Your Kid a Money Genius, even if you are not. Well done, thank you so much. It's really a pleasure. Stay with us from the Tisch WNET studio here in Lincoln Center. Well done. Brought to you by New Jersey Council of County Colleges, JFK Medical Center, and by New Jersey Sharing Network.